We're starting our look back at 2023, and over the next week, we will look closely at several issues. This morning, we are covering education, the issues affecting students and teachers across Tennessee, and here in our local classrooms. Here's our Lori Tucker with the look back. What we're trying to do is not retain students, we are trying to propel students forward. And I probably have gotten more uh, letters, emails, and calls on third grade retention this summer and fall than anything else. This is no surprise to us. Unfortunately, it's a surprise to a lot of parents across the state of Tennessee. Parents, schools, and lawmakers faced the ramifications of what had been a bipartisan law when it passed, not allowing kids to move on from third to fourth grade if they didn't score proficient on the English language arts part of their TCAP tests. Lots of students were not reading at grade level as the spring semester approached its end and test scores came out. It seemed like everyone had questions or concerns. Who gave them the authority to decide whether my kid can read or not? They... They've done, they don't know anything. They don't know my kid. They don't know how to be third grade teachers. Some of the kids affected, if you did not look at the test scores, were doing great. She's a straight A student and she just, she really felt that like she did well on this test. And when she got the results, it, it broke her. It really did. Both parents saying they'd start homeschooling their kids. Even a Knox County School Board member said her child did not do well on the test. There are so many parents, even just in Knox County, that are in this very same boat. Lawmakers supporting the change insisted the worries were overblown and the goal was worthy. But this idea that we're going to hold back 60% of third graders, that is simply not accurate. The retention rule came with exceptions, retests, and an appeals process. As it turned out, in all, the reading retention hurdle turned out to be shockingly low. The vast majority of appeals were granted. Just 36 kids in Knox County were held back. That's less than 1% of third graders, prompting the question, why bother? All right, we've got help on the way, um, but are you are you hearing shots now? The school shooting template repeated again, this time at Covenant School in Nashville. A former student with a gun, six dead, three students, three adults, the shooter too. Also repeated the calls for change, this time coming right to state lawmakers' doorsteps. It's no peace! Me no This shooting, though, also brought the issue to the doorstep of Governor Bill Lee. Cindy was supposed to come over to have dinner with Maria last night after she filled in as a substitute teacher yesterday at Covenant. Cindy and Maria and Catherine Kuntz were all teachers at the same school and have been family friends for decades. Lee opened the door to tightening state gun laws, at least when it comes to people showing signs they might hurt someone or themselves. Protests spanned the state. The legislature session ended with no change to the gun law, but lawmakers did okay hundreds of millions of dollars for school security, including an SRO for every Tennessee school. That left some unsatisfied. And while the state waited for Governor Lee's special called session, gun rights advocates piled on, labeling the governor's proposal a red flag law. In some circles, red flag might as well be a scarlet letter and the special session ended with few bills passing and the parties as divided as ever. Do we have a lot of work to do going forward? We should never stop. The school safety issue stayed on the minds of Tennesseans. Moving away from traditional public schools, potentially with public dollars, a theme this year, growing from years past and likely to do so in the year ahead. Knox County School Board in April approved another charter school, Knoxville Preparatory School been getting a lot of calls over the last year and a half from families in Knoxville saying, hey, can you do this in Knoxville? We even had a parent call and ask if we have a bus that goes from Knoxville to Chattanooga. We believe uh, the current uh, school system here in Knox County needs all of, needs all of the resources that it can get. Uh, this proposed charter school uh, will only uh, put further strain on an already a struggling school system. Knox Prep is on track to admit its first class this coming fall. That will make two charter schools up and running in Knox County. The first, Emerald Academy, was picked in late November as the site for Governor Lee to take his pitch for expanding school vouchers on the road. It's expected to be Lee's big push in the 2024 legislative session, growing what has been a two-county, then three-county pilot program to all 95 counties. 
You have families that we've talked to that said, hey, we're going to have to borrow mo money or mortgage the house because we want to send our kids to a private school that we can't afford. We depend on the public schools to provide a good education, and they need every dollar that they can get to do that. Looking at the numbers here in Knox County, TCAP scores from last school year are higher than before the pandemic. For the first time, district-wide scores in English language arts surpassed pre-pandemic numbers. 41.2% of students scored proficient across all tested grades in Knox County. That's compared to 39.5% last year, but it's higher than the state proficiency rate, which is 38%.